Now if you have one of these little multifunction testers or one of the many variants of them you know that they're very handy little devices they're quite smart they, they figure out almost anything uh, but normally you have to put the parts in there and okay sometimes you can't get parts in there and they give you this little adapter thing which you can stick in here and you've got that but that is pretty crappy too and it's very short and these are I think pretty crappy connectors uh, so this is a little upgrade I made to improve it what is this upgrade I'm talking about it's a, a little socket on the side there it's a three pin stereo socket or three three uh, terminal stereo socket three and a half mil plug which allows you to plug in various attachments um, this is similar to the supplied thing with those sort of test clips but a bit more robust but there's also I've also made ones Very small test leads and even a just two pins SMD connector thingy. These tweezer things are quite cheap on eBay. But probably the most useful one is um, just banana plugs. You can get right angle plugs are probably a bit more convenient, but with the banana plugs you can use alligator clips like that or those or for those hard to reach spots these sort of things so yeah I think it's a very worthwhile handy little upgrade Here's the 3.5 millimeter or 3 millimeter, whichever it is. Was it two and a half? I think it's three millimeter uh, socket. And I've drilled a hole in the case for it. So I'm going to mount that in there and then hot snot it in place so that no, no chance of the jack moving as the plugs are put in and out. Okay, that's in place now. Um, this case, at least for this jack, is uh, pretty thick and that's barely hanging on by even one thread, so the hot snot glue is certainly going to help with the uh, stability of that. Now, I want this to plug there, so it's going to look like that when it's done. Um, I want to keep these wires as short as possible. Well, I know there's probably enough, probably enough room that um, they're not going to get caught on anything. Yeah, so I'll lay them over to, hit to the first three pins on the ZIF socket and glue them down there as well, so that they don't put any strain on the solder joints there. So that's next. Okay, there's the wires joined over to the pins one, two, and three on the ZIF socket and glued down. Closer look. There it goes. There. Um, now that obviously is going to add a very slight amount of capacitance to the. Yeah, so that that will have added a bit of capacitance to the connections, but uh, I doubt it'd be very much. We'll find out. Um, these things can't read below about I think 25 puff or 20 puff. So if I stick a 33 puff in there and see if it comes out to more than that well, well you'll just know that you have to subtract however many three four five how many picofarads that comes out to and the yeah that closes up okay if only I knew where the screws were for this thing I'd be laughing wouldn't I yeah um, so and the next thing to do is make up the adapter cables that go in here so, how did you go? Did you spot the mistake?
Yes, that was a test. I had the orange wire going here instead of here, so that it wasn't one of them wasn't connecting. So um, yeah, there's a lesson for anyone that plans on making one of these things. Yes, so before you do anything as semi-permanent as using hot melt glue, check the continuity. Make sure that this thing goes to the right place. Each of these goes to the right place on there. I have done that. It does work now, and I'm going to put it back together. Quick test of that. Uh, it wouldn't read 15 puff or 18 puff, so I'm trying 20. Oh, sorry, 33. which it says is 34, so maybe I've added one pick of arid. And this one, I think, is also reads at 34. 35. So, if that's what these things really are, then 35 and 34 is, what, 60, 68. Sorry, 69. But if I've only added one or two puff, then I should get uh, 66 plus one or two, so it should get 66, 67, 68, but not 69. Sixty-six, so yeah. So that wiring's adding what? One or two puff or or maybe it would have done it anyway. I don't know, I didn't try it before. Uh, but with nothing there it says no part. So, I think it's been a pretty good mod. So it hasn't done any damage. So a nice, solid, robust connection. connection. Heat shrink tubing. Sleeve over that. Of course, you could make up lots of these little cables with different fittings at, at, at the other end. You could use these little things like the original head, or larger ones, or alligator clips or specialized fittings for fit, fitting onto um, particular parts. I only have this style in three different colors so that's what I'll put on. So there you go bloody ready to go. Now I've used these colors red green blue or whatever the bloody hell that is I'm colorblind so I wouldn't know but I'm calling it green Red, green, blue, one, two, three. There, so easy to remember. Now let's try the pick of parrot test again with these cables, see how much they add. So that should be between red, green, blue, should be between one and three. Ooh, look at all the puffs that we added. If you want, uh, if you want to do pick up arid tests, use this. But for all other things, this could be quite handy. Or just remember how many pick up arids it adds, and um, and subtract. It's a lot more than I would have thought. Hmm. Okay. So it's no good for testing small puffs, but it should be good for other stuff. Like a lot of, and with, with the um, with alligator clips, this would be even easier to do a TO3. PJT, NPN, as it is, uh, 2 and 3 out of 5. Lovely. So now I can test some capacitors that are down inside a piece of equipment that this wouldn't be able to reach, but this can. Beautiful. And when it's all done, you can put all your attachments and your tester away in a little dollar Kmart plastic box and there she is a ripper 
Catch you later.